Now that we've completed our workflow for the 15-16 year and we have both our outflow and inflow uh, data combined and our formulas computed to get the nets, the next thing that we need to do is we need to repeat this workflow for all the remaining years that we need the data for. In this video, you're going to learn how to copy and paste the entire workflow and then reconfigure it for the year 11-12. To copy the entire workflow, click on the larger container that we created towards the end of the video. And then using your right click button, go ahead and right click to reveal the submenu. Select copy, move to a blank space on your canvas, and then go ahead and select paste. The first thing that we're going to do in reconfiguring our window is we're going to go ahead and rename all of our containers. So go ahead and click on the name in the container, delete out the 1516 year, and type in 1112. Do this for both of your sub containers as well. And this way we know what year we're working with in each of these containers. Now that we've decided that this is going to be the 1112 workflow, we can go ahead and start with the 1112 outflow. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and reconfigure our input data tool. Currently it's selecting the outflow worksheet from the 1516 file and we need to obviously get it to select in the work outflow worksheet for the year 11-12. So click once, go to the drop down menu, find your file for 11-12, and then remember you're here, we're going to click again on the drop down menu because we have four worksheets in each of these spreadsheets, and we're going to select the state outflow since that's the workflow we're working with. Hit OK, and then go ahead and run to bring that file. When we bring the file in, now we can start to get, check the configuration of all the other tools. We're not going to worry about any of the other workflows just yet. We're just going to get the outflow workflow to make sure that it's running correctly. So we go ahead and we check our data cleansing and we see that all of our default configurations are fine. We're also going to do the same thing for our second data cleansing step and we again see that all of our default configurations are fine so we don't need to do anything. What we do need to do though, however, is figure out if we're skipping the right number of rows. As mentioned in the previous videos, we cannot assume that it is going to remain consistent throughout all of the years. So what we want to do since we ran the tool is we want to click on the output anchor from the second data cleansing. And we want to go down and we want to find the first record number where we have a state instead of some total data. And what we see as we use our scroll bar is that our states start now on record number 10. If you recall, the 15-16 year started on record number 11. So we cannot use skip 10, we need to skip 9 so that we start on the 10th row. The reason for this difference is that in the 11-12 year, the total migration for same state record is not reported. Whereas in the 15-16 year, the total migration same state data was reported. So we can go ahead and reconfigure our skip tool. We can do so one of two ways. We could highlight that and then we can type in the number 9 over top of it. Or we could use the down arrow. Now that we're skipping the appropriate number of rows, we can go ahead and either run again or we can go on to configuring our select tool. So let's go ahead and run first. And don't worry about errors just yet because we know that we're going to have some things that we need to check. Let's look at the configuration for our select tool. Here we see that we have all of the appropriate names. We didn't have to worry like we did when we were configuring the tools for the from the 1516 outflow to work for the 1516 inflow because we're dealing now with just the outflow tab. And so we can see that our Hawaii outflow is still selected and it's appropriate because that's how the outflow sheet was named for 1112. We can then click on our output anchor for the select tool. 
And again, see if we still have to get rid of nulls at the bottom of our worksheet. And indeed, we see that we still have these nulls. There was uh, notes put in by the IRS to help us understand the spreadsheet. So we can look at the configuration of our filter tool. And we can see that it's still selecting on Hawaii ID and get it, asking it to get rid of any observations where there is nulls is going to give us the right results. And so now we're done configuring the 1112 outflow. We can now then move to configuring our inflow. So we're going to repeat that process. We will select the down arrow from the input data tool. We'll go ahead and redirect the file to pull in the 1112 file instead of the 1560. And then we will make sure that we select the state inflow sheet instead of the state outflow because we're now working in the inflow workflow. Go ahead and click OK and let's run that step. And we're going to do the same process where we check our data configuration, our tool configuration for the data cleanse, for the second data cleanse. And we're going to click on our output anchor to see what number, record number we start on. And for the 1112 inflow file, it also starts on record number 10. So we're going to go ahead and use the down arrow to reduce that skip first in rows from 10 down to 9. We can then look at our select um, configuration and we see here, if you remember back to the 1516 file, we had to uncheck the outflow, which would be missing in the inflow tab, and check the inflow. But Alteryx remembers that process, so it goes ahead and unchecks that and has the inflow appropriately checked for us. We can look at the names and everything looks appropriate here from that configuration and all of our data types are correct. We can then go and scroll down to see if we also have null fields here, and we see that we do. So we can go ahead and continue to use the filter tool as it is configured. So now that we have all of this correct configuration, go ahead and run. And now we can look at our join configuration. Both of our files still had state ID, that unique identifier for each of the states in our data set. So we can continue to use the state ID as our join by specific field instruction. Then when we look at our options down here, we keep continue to keep some of our identifier rows from the left join. Then we also keep our outflow number of returns, number of exemptions, and AGI. And we keep our inflow number of returns, exemptions, and AGI. So this tool is also configured appropriately. We don't have to do anything here. Now we can look at our formula. And our formula, if you recall, is the first place where we put in the years. And this was done so that when we do a combination of all of the years, we know which years are attached to which net numbers. So we do need to do some reconfiguration here, specifically in the box where we had previously added a column. And what you can do is you can click once into that box, use your arrow, your right side arrow, to scroll to the end of that name and go ahead and delete out the 1516 and enter in 1112. All of the remaining configuration is appropriate, so we just need to repeat that process for each of our new computational net numbers. Recall we don't need to do that for the net AGI. We use that as an intermediary tool, but we do, would need to do that for the net AGI scaled into dollars. Now that we've completely configured our formula tool, go ahead and click the Run Again. And let's finally look at the configuration for our last select tool. Here we see just like when we copied our outflow for our inflow, Alteryx is now giving us a warning that some of the fields that we had previously selected for the 15-16 year are no longer available. And that makes sense because we just renamed those to 1112. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and uncheck each of those missing fields and then we need to select the fields that correspond for the year that we're working in. The types are all correct and we don't need to rename anything at this point. So now we can finally go ahead and run. 
and we are completely done the configuration process for the workflow for 11 and 12. What you need to do now is you need to follow that same process for the remaining years.